Hi, welcome back to another episode of Sankofa Pan-African series. We'll quickly look at the relationship between Egypt and uh, Nubia from about uh, 7000 BC, which according to S. Adam and O.J. Vercourt, there appears to have been a common material um, culture throughout Nubia. The edge of the Ethiopian highlands and as far as middle as the uh, middle of Egypt. Adam and Verkut suggest that differences between the civilizations of Lower Egypt and that of Upper Nubia only began to appear around 3000 BC. They point to similarities in funeral customs, pottery, stone, and metal instruments found in these areas we therefore lead to conclusions about similarities in social organizations, religious beliefs, and general way of life, such as hunting, fishing, animal husbandry, and, and um, other forms of agricultural um, practices at that time. However, writing appeared in Egypt around 3200 BC, while Nubia is believed to have remained a predominantly oral culture. It is believed that the evolution of writing was necessary in Egypt because Egyptians had had to develop a highly centralized political system which was needed to run their irrigation system. In the south, the communities of Nubia, with their oral culture, maintained a social and political organization which was still based on a smaller uh, on, based on smaller political units, and so did not have the same um, urgency to develop writing. Some researchers also believe that it was the need for a highly centralized system of irrigation that was necessary to feed the large population uh, of Egypt, which led to the evolution of a centralized monarchic system of organization. The two civilizations, Egypt and Nubia, are believed to have complemented one another economically, and this facilitated exchanges between them. However, from around 3200 BC, under the first um, dynasty, Egyptians started sending troops into Nubia to find raw materials such as wood, which were lacking or becoming scarce in Egypt due to its increasing population. So by this time, Egypt had lost the belt of forest, which in uh, former times lined the banks of the Nile River because the lower Nile became increasingly incorporated into the irrigation system. Egypt also needed to keep an open passage southwards in order to have access to incense, gum, ivory, ebony, and panthers, which were in abundance uh, f uh, um, further south in sub-Saharan -Sub Africa. The first capital of Kush, a Nubian empire, is believed to have been Kema, where ancient burial mounds have been found, which suggests that they were the burial places of very powerful native rulers who had commercial and diplomatic relationships with the Hyksos kings who ruled Egypt after the Hyksos invaders took over power there. The rulers of the Nubian kingdom were called Prince of Kush. One of such, um, one evidence points to um, one of such great rulers. It is, this evidence is found in the first stele of Kamos. The stele is a stone slab with inscriptions detailing the achievements of rulers 
as powerful as Camus. Camus was the last king of the seventh dynasty in Egypt and probably the first king who mounted an organized resistance against the Hyksos invaders. This slab also depicts the political situation in the Nile Valley at that time. It shows evidence of an independent kingdom of Kush. The Encyclopedia Britannica also reports that around 2575 BC, the Egyptian pharaoh Snefru conducted a raid into Nubia in order to establish an Egyptian outpost there. And by the 6th dynasty, Egyptians were carrying out long-range trading expeditions, sometimes combined with military raids. Eventually, the Nubian chiefs united against these Egyptian um, expeditions. They too started making incursions into Egypt. They wanted to retaliate. They eventually broke through Egyptian borders around the 13th century, uh, sorry, around the 13th dynasty, advancing northwards in 1650 BC. They took advantage of the invasion of the Hyksos to raid Upper Egypt, from where they carted monuments that they carried off to their capital. Eventually, the Theban nobles who were fighting to retake power from the Hyksos tried to form an alliance with the Kushites who rejected their advances. However, Egyptian nobles were still able to penetrate Kush in order to form a guerrilla movement with which they fought against the Hyksos, as I mentioned earlier. During the process of expelling the Hyksos, the Thebans simultaneously continued to penetrate Nubia, and between 1514 and 1493 BC, they conquered the capital city, thereby colonizing a good chunk of Nubian area. One of the main attractions which made Egypt colonize Kush was its gold and other precious metals. After colonization, the Encyclopedia Britannica reports that although Nubians became gradually Egyptianized, Nubia broke away to form its own kingdom around 800 BC. Kush then conquered all of Egypt around 715 BC, ending the 22nd, 23rd, and 24th dynasties by founding the 25th dynasty. The 25th dynasty is called Kushite in the king's list. It is also sometimes referred to as, Ethiop as Ethiopian dynasty by some historians. The kingdom was so powerful that in 701 BC, the Hebrew king Hezekiah sought and got the help of, Kush, of a Kushite king named Shabaka to help him revolt against Assyria. I will continue with the 25th dynasty under Kush in the next episode. Please, once again, don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you have not yet done so. Like it and feel free to share with your friends. See you next time.